Hello again, uh, Brad Kropp, uh, Medical Director at OKC Kids Urology here in Oklahoma City. Um, and today we're going to talk about procedures, surgical procedures for continence and dryness. Remember, uh, we did a previous video discussing the difference between continence, and that's the volitional voiding. Uh, that's what uh, people do. Uh, they Their bladders generate pressures, and then they void spontaneously. Uh, they can control it. They don't need any diapers. And again, only only about 25% uh, of the of the extra fee population is going to gain continence. Uh, and usually it's always going to require some type of of surgical procedure. So again, remember we, we close the bladder and uh, we rebuild the, the bladder neck. Um, and even after a complete primary repair or with the modern stage repair, basically if you're not dry, you're going to need some kind of procedure. This would be a male and this would be a female. And what we're really talking about is, is the bladder neck sphincter area. So a lot of people think the sphincter is that muscle that's going to clamp down and hold it on when you, when you don't want to urinate. But really continence comes from the bladder neck area. So this region um, in, in right in here is where, we, where we're going to need to create continence. So usually, typically, what needs to be done is we're going to have to do some kind of uh, tightening of this area. And that basically would involve a, a procedure kind of called a Young D's, uh, lead better bladder neck repair. And that's where we're going to take part of the bladder tissue and we're going to rebuild it. So we're going to take some of the bladder and we're going to lengthen this urethra and then we're going to wrap some of the bladder around here. So you can see we lose bladder capacity when we do that. That's unfortunate because again, remember we're limited by the amount of bladder capacity that we have. So then we rebuild this and now we have a new bladder with a little bit smaller capacity, but we have a sphincter muscle. And hopefully that sphincter muscle would then be able to allow the urine to come out. That would be the ultimate for the dry procedures. But again, only, I mean, for the continent procedures, but only 25% are going to be able to achieve that. And again, it's both, both the modern stage as well as the complete primary repair may require some type of bladder neck procedures. There's also a Mitchell bladder neck procedure for continence, uh, and this is done mainly after the uh, complete primary closure. And that's just it, you don't use up quite as much bladder, but you make a you make a a, a cut that's that's this way in the bladder, and then you close it this way so that it lengthens the urethra and narrows it. So again, that's that would be the what. Uh, what's called the Mitchell bladder neck repair. And again, it's, it's going to try to do the same thing and create a little bit more continence. The benefit of the Mitchell is that, that we don't use up as much bladder as we do with the young D's.